First, good morning, sir. <laughs> good morning, Rob. Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning. He is also the chairman of the West Virginia First Foundation. He's a big hitter, Matt Harvey. <laughs> and one. a dad. And a dad. Yes. And also New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap, who's also written the 409 words you can't write in a book or say on the radio, Mr. John Gilstrap. Good morning. You want to hear any of them now? I do. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mogul not quite as enthusiastic. <laughs> about that uh no. coming up at uh, 9 30 uh an author uh denise kiernan who tell us about denise kiernan uh, denise kiernan has written a book that is um i full disclosure i haven't read it i've read about it it's about the origins of thanksgiving and not in oh, a wow. it's in, sort of in the political sense of where it came from yeah abraham lincoln uh, picked it up after george washington introduced it it was kind of dead in between so now you're the expert you're gonna you're stealing her thunder so I'm previewing the segment uh, so <laughs> If we would have had turkeys as the national bird, would we be eating eagles on Thanksgiving? I don't know. So long as we have canned cranberry sauce, I don't care. Pumpkin pie. Uh, our next guest is Brandon Burton. He's the research manager of West Virginia Office of the Legislative Auditor. Good morning, Brandon. Thank you so much for being with us. Hello. Thank you for uh, having me. I also wanted to introduce the. Uh, I have my team members that help. Uh, conduct the performance evaluation here as well. Lucas Griffith, who's a senior research analyst, and Brooke Christian, who's a uh, research analyst as well. Lucas and Brooke, you said? Yes, ma'am. Oh, very good. That, welcome, and we appreciate all you folks joining us this morning. Mike has the booklet in front of him, which is the legislative audit re report yeah, that you guys uh, put together. You, you guys uh, did a presentation to joint uh, government organization, I believe. And, and you yes, put, sir. You put together a packet of... Uh, surprising numbers and I, I thought it was really interesting when I read through it so that's why we invited you on can you give us a how did this booklet start was it was it because of the issues in Upshur County is that why we did a, a audit of mm -hmm. all, all the counties no sir this was part of uh, a statute in order to conduct a departmental review um, for the Department of Education and at the time when we first initiated contact with the Department of Education we then as auditors wanted to come up with what we call an objective or a question to be answered. And with the COVID funding getting going at the time, we were sort of maybe a third in. We felt as though let's take a look at what's the, what's the oversight of the particular funds, and um, which then led into our objective, which we attempted to answer. There, there were three different levels of funding that the uh, Board of Educations in each county got, correct? Yes, sir. ESSER 1, ESSER 2, and then ARP ESSER funding. And, you know, they kind of staggered in at different times, um, like March of 2020, uh, January of 2021, and then Mar March of 2021. Can and you the total yeah. amount was 1.2 billion dollars across the state correct yeah across the state yeah debbied out throughout the counties um so for our particular review we were focused on the very first one that came in which was about um close to 80 million dollars which is esser one and what and so, what, what were the oh, results of that uh that review of that esser one i'm sorry go ahead what, what are some of the results that you found in, in this uh Study. Well, we, what we found, yeah, sure. With, with the ESSER 1, there was a stipulation of receiving the funds that was for the Department of Education to implement um, adequate capacity for appropriate fiscal monitoring and, and internal control over the use of those particular funds to ensure that they were used for, for appropriate uh, purposes and to guard against potential sources of waste. So we ultimately found when we went through the process and the uh, invoices that were reviewed by the West Virginia Department of Education and their fiscal monitoring review that uh, they had implemented a fiscal monitoring and an in internal control system, but its capacity was inadequate for ensuring use of ESSER funds and the structure lacked sp specific criteria that should be reviewed in all cases. So in other words, we were finding that those that were going through the fiscal fiscal monitoring system was anywhere from one individual to five individuals. So you would have a particular county that was reviewed um, to make sure that the funds were spent on allowable pur purposes, 
but yet they were being reviewed by, in a lot of cases, one person. I think over, actually over 20 times, over 20 counties were reviewed by just one person. And then I'm, I'm looking at the, the list you have here um, and, and the different criteria. You've got improper purchasing procedures. Is that just uh, clerical things that they've spent that money on? Because there's some staggering numbers from some smaller counties. Is that just they didn't have the staff to, to record those um, purchasing procedures right? Or it, was it improper use of the funds? Well, we, w we wouldn't know the staff number for each county, but... For the improper purchasing, we were looking at what did they follow the per policy 8200, which is the purchasing policy for the Department of Education. So, for example, when there is a purchase for over $50,000, you need to have public advertisement and sealed bids. Um, and so it kind of ranges. You know, when it's less than $5,000, competitive bids are encouraged but not required. Um, anywhere from five to ten thousand, a minimum of three verbal quotes must be obtained, and so on and so forth. And that's in Table Eight of the report. So, we were sp specifically looking if there was documentation that was supplied to the Department of Education, which indicated as such, was that being done? And in a lot of cases, the Department of Education found that counties weren't following that. Um, in fact, there was 29 that were cited for improper purchasing procedures. Um, and part of our process was we reviewed every invoice that was reviewed by the Department of Education as well. And we found that there were seven counties that were not, should have been flagged as being non-compliant for that particular issue. Um, and they weren't. And we put that in the report as well that for those particular counties that should have been flagged for non-compliance of uh, improper use of uh, improper following policy 8200 um, and and our exit conference of the Department of Education agreed on those seven as well that they're they should have just they should have been flagged and just to uh, just give some people some idea we're not talking about small amounts of money either we're talking, yeah Boone County 329,000 Doddridge 195,000 Hancock 169,000 these all add up to well, about 1.5 million of improper purchasing procedures just in SO1? What would yeah, uh, that's correct. Okay. That, yeah, and that's that's those are the counties that were flagged by the Department of Education. So that for that for that particular issue, that's correct. The the seven that we found that should have been deemed non compliant, for example, Logan County, the purchase amount was over one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. The total amount of those seven came to two hundred eighty-five, a little bit over two hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. Now, <clears throat> hi, this is John Gilstrap. Uh, hey, are, are these technical violations of esoteric rules, or are these sort of willful flouting of well-known procedures? It's part of their policy, and it's part of the Department of Education's purchasing policy. And for most spending, or for Spending agencies as well in the state of West Virginia, that's the, the policy as well. Um, it's a, you know, those thresholds that I was get, providing you, those are set in stone. So, so and projecting back to the madness of the pandemic years, um, where you were lucky to find any hand sanitizer or masks, so you went and snatched them up right away, was, was that sense of urgency driving some of this, or do we know what was driving it? I mean, I, just based off of the joint joint meeting, the response from the Department of Education, that seems to be the case. So we needed gloves. We didn't have time to go through the bureaucracy. We found gloves. Let's buy them and deal with It's better to ask forgiveness than permission kind of deal, right? Well, I, I think it lists, um, you know, the seven that he's talking about, um, Logan, Berkeley, Monroe, Lincoln, Marshall, Tyler, Montegalia. It was like virtual learning, wireless internet, virtual learning. PPE, dispensing cart, hand sanitizer, reading software, and desk shields, mm -hmm. essentially. Right. So uh, was, is some of this report also some of the abuse we heard of certain counties going on retreats and to resorts and spending things on items that had nothing to do with what these funds were intended to, Brandon? Yes, sir. How much of that as a percentage would you say makes up the misuse of funds? 
uh, that's that's really uncertain on our end. But the only thing that we were drawing out of was when the cyclical monitoring is performed by the Department of Education, it may initiate a special investigation. And the two cases that we brought up um, will really be the only two that we could cite, and that was Logan and Upshur. So in general, most of the rest of the violations are not necessarily of a fraudulent or criminal nature, correct? They are violations of uh, rules that in require a second bid or a public, uh, a public uh, notification of something. Is that correct? That would be correct. That would be, you know, what, we, what was distributed to us from the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. um, and also the seven that we cited should have been deemed uh, non-compliant. Now, whether or not they, they go any further, that's on the you know, that's up to the Department of Education. But what we reviewed was strictly what is within the report. Is it fair to say that by and large there was not widespread fraudulent use of the funds that were distributed to the school systems, or am I uh, stating something incorrect? Well, well uh, it, just to state the facts, it's purchasing violations. Um, and uh, the, in, the exceeding the indirect costs and some of the unallowable expenses. That's all we reported on. Matt Harvey. Uh, good morning, Brandon. My name is Matt Harvey. Hey. Um, does this does this trigger a, a clawback? There, and it's cited in the report. They um, the specific number escapes me. Although I might have it in front of me, um, it, it has in some instances. Uh, let's see here. Um, in a, in two, a 2023 report, the Office of Federal Programs had indicated that they have recovered 134, over $134,000 of ESTRA-1 funds from a total of 19 local education agencies and over $320,000 of ESTRA-2 and ARC funds from 13 LEAs. And um, some of those funds were subject to unallowable expenditures such as, pri such as private school expenses, food, and a choir trip out of state name a few so yes the the to answer to that question okay where I, I don't have a copy of the report delegate hornby does and i can see it but i, I can't read it uh yeah. how how would the public uh get a, their hands on a copy of this report yeah you can go to the west virginia legislature website um where or just google per, the west virginia performance evaluation and research division um, and all of our recent report, it, it can go back in time as well, but that report should be front and center on where you hit view all reports and it, for 2023. And what, what are the consequences of all of this? Are, are we, I don't know, maybe that's not what your office gets into, but this has happened, so therefore, what's next? Sure. Well, we provide the Department of Education and the, the Joint Committee as well, I mean, it's part of our report, recommendations. Um, and, for example, one of the recommendations had to do with implementing um, a review of businesses and whether or not they were uh, registered with the Secretary of State. And that should be part of that. At that time and now, it's, it's not part of Policy 8200 or the purchasing policy. So that's part of that's a recommendation you, and the Department of Education has indicated that they they will implement that recommendation at, by the, the summer of 2000 or 2021 and it should be part of the policy going forward that um, they would the requirement would be that LEAs use vendors that are appropriately licensed with the state of West Virginia so something like that when we provide a recommendation the department or agency or board um, may or may not want to follow up and uh, and their, their particular response they indicated that they would follow up on that one so with the rules associated with spending this money different than the rules associated with spending any public money no no it's part of their policy so do does the does your office do an audit of all board of education money all all their budgets no sir no so the the state the state funds that normally go on a regular um yearly period that is not audited by the, the state auditor 
No, no, sir. Are other states, have they conducted similar audits of this type of expenditures for this, this stimulus package? And if, if they did, are you familiar with the results? Yeah, yeah, and that's cited in the report as well. Um, there were three that we noted. Um, there was a December 2020 report by the North Carolina Office of the State Auditor, um, and they found that the Department of Public Instruction distributed around $76 million of CARES Act funding, but did not monitor the, the spending. Um, the report indicated as a result there was an increased risk that public school units could have misused the funds without the misuse being detected. Um, and there were others that are within the report as well. Of note was uh, the Auditor of State California released a report in October 21 regarding COVID federal funding spending in the State Department of Education. The report identified inadequacies of the monitoring process and as the agency reviewed less than 1% of LEAs that received ESSER funding. The report also stated that the small number of LEAs that education monitors is concerning given that it identified significant issues related to the unsupported or unallowable expenditures at some of the 15 LEAs that it selected. So there's some that are out there, and there were three that were noted in the report. LEA stands for, once again? Local Education Agency. What was the total amount of dollars, Brandon, in this report that was cited for either uh, misuse or uh, improper purchasing? Um... That would be. Did you say two in million, total, Mike? Two, yeah, in two total, point about one and in, in one point seven. Yeah. One point seven million, because we've one point five was was noted and uh, reported on by the Department of Education, and then our office noted that there were seven that should have been flagged as well, which the department then agreed to. And that was a little bit over two hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. So. One point, a little bit over one point seven million. Now, you you only sampled a certain amount of invoices and and the spending, correct? You you didn't do every single purchase that they made. We did. Okay, yeah. So the Department of Education's policy is to have on hand or request one hundred percent of the spending from each county. Okay. And then part of their monitoring process is they take a sample of that. They take a sample of all those invoices and review each invoice for the particular items that you, you can see within the report that if you are deemed non-compliant, it was due to purchasing policy or unallowable expenses or exceeding... Uh, so the percent of allocation policy. the percent of allocation reviewed, is that the percent of invoices, is that the percent, or is that the percent that was bad? The, I'm looking uh, at the, Appendix the 1. Sure, the, the department didn't, you know, and in some cases they reviewed close to 100% of the invoices, um, and in some cases they, they didn't. And from that, we took everything that they reviewed, we took a look at as well. I would presume so, if you started to find violations, did that then increase the percentage of invoices you reviewed? We could, only re we could only review what the Department of Education provided us, which was exactly what they reviewed. I see. So if you look at that appendix, it's... Uh, so uh, can you project how much waste, fraud, or abuse there was based on your sample size? I, I don't think so, no. I mean, it, we're... I mean, it's based... At, the sounds like you're getting some advice there yeah <laughs> take your time yeah i mean can you ask the question again so so it, not every every bill that the that the county spent was was analyzed right you, there was a correct so, so correct. there was a percentage you audited one percent ten percent of of the total 1.2 billion dollar award and you got X percentage of of grift or whatever or improper right, buying, right. not necessarily grift, right. but just maybe they forgot to check, you know, code it correctly. Can you, based on the sample size, can you extrapolate out what the percentage of the one point two billion dollars that was either inappropriately spent or or would fall under scrutiny based on the standards of your audit? 
Yeah, there wouldn't be any way to extrapolate that. I mean, basically, for example, I'm looking at, I've pulled the appendix up. So for Barber County, the percent of the allocation reviewed by Barber County was 31%. 31% of the okay. total okay. was reviewed. So, thir- so in other words, there were 31% of those invoices from Barber County were reviewed by the Department of Education. We took a look at that particular, the number, the percentage, exactly what the Department of Education reviewed as well, if that makes, you know. Yeah, makes I've got we, it. We didn't, have, we didn't have access to any other invoices. So I understand. It's, what, it's exactly what the Department of Education pulled. And so that, that example would have been 31%. Uh, uh, Boone, they pulled 44%. And we took a look at all 44% of those invoices. So the rest of the, the remainder of the 100%, what would that be, 56? We didn't have access to. So, we're, we're so Berkeley was the, Berkeley was only 8%, correct? Right. And so it's the Department of Education. What was Jefferson's uh, three. Yeah. Jefferson forwarded three. to us was, oh, I'm sorry, but what was forwarded to us is that that's their process. You know, they're going to pull, they're going to request 100% of the financial documents or the invoices for that ESSER one that was reviewed, but they're not pulling all of those. Yeah. And, and whatever they pulled and reviewed, we, we reviewed the exact number as well. It, is uh, AI, does it, is it going to offer solutions to be able to track compliance for these spending metrics? I, we didn't go, we didn't look into that. We, and that's, it's really nothing that we looked into, so I really couldn't answer that but question. I just wonder if there's, you know, so, there has to be some software improvements that are coming along. But anyway, that's not that's outside the scope here. We're just about out of time. Brandon, I want to thank you very much for yours. And again, where can the public find this report that you presented? It's on the uh, performance evalu- West Virginia Performance Evaluation and Research Division's website, and it would be under uh, the reports from 2023. It would be the list there. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. We appreciate your time, and Lucas and Brooke as well for helping out there. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.